I just felt like I was going to be saved. I felt like I was going to be protected by martial arts. You know, I know a lot about your background, but maybe some people don't. How did you even get started really into the self-defense field? Um, yeah, I've, I've got, most people have, a lot of people don't realize, but everyone has an origin story for something they're doing, right? You know, like, yeah. like if you, if somebody pushes you and says, well, how did you get started? How did, like, did, were you just in the military? You just woke up one day and you're in the military? Like, or did you just, like, you're just, you all of a sudden you're like doing a podcast? Like there were origin stories for every chapter in our lives, mm -hmm. something that created some sort of spark or ignition or inspiration for that. Um, for me, I, I have a few origin stories for different um, phases in what's been decades of just a fascination with uh, self-defense, the yeah. ability to protect myself. Um, probably the, the, the more uh, obvious origin story would be I'm about 12 years old. I'm walking home from a, a pickup baseball game with some friends and we were using the, uh, el the local elementary school, uh, their field, and I'm leaving them alone. I'm, I'm skipping home like I'm a good game. See the guys, see it on Monday. It's a Sunday and I see these two kids and I'm like 12 and they're 15 years old. They go to the high school. It's about 500 yards up their street. And they're walking on the sidewalk as I'm coming through the parking lot from the elementary school. And they go, hey, kid, come here. And I'm like, oh, cool. Older kids want to talk to me. And I like, I actually run right into the fucking ambush. And oh. Like I run up to them and they go, and they go, hey, you go to school here? I go, yeah, but next year I'm going to the high school. And they go, well, we go to the high school. Welcome to high school. And I'm like, thanks. And they grab me. And one of the kids like puts me in a full Nelson behind my back. And the other guy goes into like a bolo punch to hit me. I'm like, I'm, I'm there, Johnny, like this, trying to fuck. I'm trying to get away from them. Yeah. And I was a, an all round athlete. So I, I skied competitively, did gymnastics, played tennis. Uh, um, uh, what else? Uh, wrestled. So I was in really good shape, mm -hmm. but I'd never been in a fight. Yeah. And, and so yeah. why I'm explaining that is because these guys, one guy's holding my arms behind me and my abs were as tight as you could get them. Like mm -hmm. if you were in a boxing gym doing some like, like conditioning drills, you'd be against the ropes like this and your partner's hitting you, hitting you with a med ball or hitting you with body shots. I didn't know this, but I was locked on here. When that punch came into slow motion and hit me, I screamed like my younger sister would have screamed mm. in anticipation of like dying, right? So I screamed and uh, I felt the guy, I didn't feel it at all, of course, but I, <laughs> I, I, I was like, ah, and, and, and as, and this is such a nuance based, and why I'm telling this detail is because the self-defense system I created, I realized years later, that there was an intuition and an instinct that I that I applied right there that got me out of that situation with as little violence happening and 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 no damage. Mm -hmm. As I screamed, I felt the guy behind me, his grip changed, and I felt him almost like look at his buddy like shit. We didn't mean to hurt him. Mm -hmm. And I my intuition said, scream again, really loud, pretend you're dying. <laughs> and I screamed again, Johnny. I was like, uh, uh, and I started doing like some like like as if a, 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 a bone was puncturing my lung. It's like, uh, <laughs> and they dropped me and ran at me. I fell to the ground, and I'm on all fours. And they run, and you know, they they take off around the corner, and they're and they're gone. And I'm like looking there. As soon as they're gone, I get up, fix my shirt. I was like, what the fuck happened? I went home. I tell my dad. He goes, hey, I was the game. I was good, good, but that I just got beaten up by two guys. Mm. And I didn't have a mark on, like my shirt wasn't even yeah. know, torn. And, and I think he made some joke, like, what was it, a pillow fight? Like, oh, what do you mean <laughs> I beaten up by two guys? But I was so scared of this that that week, I, I, there was only one martial arts school in our area, about three miles away from my house, a Taekwondo school. And I went in there and it was like, ah, like I mm -hmm. just... I just felt like I was going to be saved. I felt like I was going to be protected by martial arts. Now, uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of backstory, and I apologize for hogging the mic for a second. You good? But I grew up in the '60s, where every TV show was like Mannix, Streets of San Francisco, 
most of your listeners are, are going to have to Google this shit. But like, <laughs> like, what are the sick people? You know, but I grew up where Wild Wild West, Batman, uh, 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 the Green Hornet with Bruce Lee. So I grew up during this era where, you know, what's now toxic max max uh, toxic masculinity. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. like every guy, the good guy got the girl and the good guy always had to beat up a bad guy in every mm-hmm. TV show. Like that was the formula. Yeah. So I grew up as a at six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. Like, you know, I was born in 1960 going, when you know how to fight, you can solve problems. Uh, you can rescue women and protect them. Mm-hmm. And like, that was like the osmosis through that. And, and, uh, it was, it was interesting. So my, my, my introduction to Taekwondo was like, okay, like maybe this is the toolbox that will help me fulfill or, or, or crystallize this, this fantasy that I had growing up as a young, young kid. So yeah. I became a fanatic, yeah. um, trained all the time, got into boxing, got into different martial arts, uh, my, when I was about 15 years old and I would work out seven days a week, my whole, my whole, Right now I'm in my garage uh, uh, where I teach four days a week still to this day, live on Zoom around the world. Wow. Uh, and, and of course, you know, we still, I still travel. Uh, we do live events, of course. But the, um, uh, what was interesting is I, I started in my garage and uh, or my, my basement, had a gym. And then uh, when I was about 15, my mom said, hey, are you going to go to the, we had a family business. Uh, you know, my d- father's father had started a, a, a manufacturing company and it was pretty successful. You're going to the family business or, you know, you're going to be a police officer. You're going to be a doctor. What are you going to be? There were very few choices in the seventies from your mm-hmm. mother, right? It was like yeah. a space man, veterinarian, doctor, police <laughs> officer, fire. Like there was like, you know, you couldn't be an influencer on Instagram yet. Yeah. And, um, I looked at her, I was sitting on the floor looking at Bruce Lee magazine, working on my splits. And I looked up at her, Johnny, and, and ver- almost verbatim, I said, mom, you know, school's not going to be that important for me. I'm going to be a famous martial artist like Bruce Lee. I'm developing my own self-defense system. Oh, wow. And she, <laughs> she literally, she pat me on the head, bro. She pat me on the head and said, okay, honey, we'll talk about this when you're older. You know, <laughs> uh, it's pretty wild. I just, I just... There was just something about this. And I would know things. I want to share this with your audience. Um, I'm 13 years old, signed up for, for Taekwondo class, right? At the end of, you must have done some organized martial arts at some point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Did you ever do any like, karate yeah. classes? Yeah. Do you remember at the end of every kata, you know, everyone go, ki, and they'd yell mm-hmm. as a group. They'd do a reverse punch, mm-hmm. and the whole group would ki. So <clears throat> we start learning this. And, um, uh, the instructor says, you know, ki, and he, like, as and everyone does it. And I'm like, why the fuck are they yelling ki before the punch? <laughs> and uh, I put in my hand, uh, sensei, why, why are we yelling ki before the punch? The the yell will startle them, and the ki, and the when you ki like that, you tense your body. If they counter, you're stronger. So I got a good answer, but my yeah. intuition was like, that's bullshit. Like, no, like, <laughs> And I'm like this 13 year old idiot, but my intuition said, I'm not going to yell before I hit you because if I'm going to hit you, I need you to be the last person that knows you're going to get fucking hit. Why would I do anything that would alert you in any way? Right. Right. So we had a, a, even at a certain, the 13 year old mind was going, Hmm. And I did stuff where, and I, you know, uh, I'm not going to mention the names, but you know, some of the organizations I've worked with, yeah. Uh, where I'm yeah. consulting on some of our force on force CQB, like, like now fast forward decades later, like post, like, uh, like, like I was working at Fort on Fort Bragg on Z nine 11. I don't know if you knew that. Um, no, I didn't know that. And, um, yeah, uh, pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm doing stuff all over the world with different DOD military organizations, uh, you know, SWAT team, stuff like that. And I would say, well, why are you approaching a guy like this? And some people in the room would go, and I used to, I'm, I'm an American citizen now, but I used to live in Canada when, mm-hmm. I, when I first started doing that. I lived in Montreal. So they'd be like, uh, you're Canadian. You don't even carry a gun. Like, just stay in your lane. Show us the hand-to-hand stuff. <laughs> like, 
And some people would go, you know, on a break, hey, tell me more about that. Like, wh what are you thinking there, right? Some people were, were extremely dogmatic and, and some people, you know, were. So that was an interesting thing throughout my career where we'd always have like, you know, it wasn't half the room, but, but like part of the people with their arms crossed, you know, like the, uh, like the roadhouse thing, I thought he'd be bigger. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, half of the people going, half of the people going, like, I've never thought about it like that. That's this, that's really interesting. And so yeah, I would explain to people, I go, listen, I'm a suggestion freak. I don't care what you do. I'm just trying to improve your self-defense IQ by blending what I call the three eyes, instincts, intuition, and intelligence. You know, when you look at something, just because just because somebody did it before you, you guys aren't riding horses with javelins into battle. Like, <laughs> like, the, like we're, past, we're past jousting and bayonets and, you know, so why not as we learn more about neurobiology and neuroscience? And that's fast forward to where we are now. I still have people that like, you know, we'll try to go spears full of shit. I've never seen Blower in an octagon and, you know, blah, blah, blah in there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is everything I talk about is grounded in modern neurobiology, kinesiology, and psychology. Every, every single movement, every single uh, uh, drill can be explained holistically. So, you know, it's a cerebral system, but you asked me how it started. I got beaten up when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, it was, it was so good to hear that story. I was very fascinated in like where Spear came from and the fact that you have such a wide um, range of background in martial arts and then crafting Spear, especially because I, I do know its effectiveness in response to something like a CQB environment, which most people don't understand how effective it is when you're in that type of environment, nor what that even looks like from a capacity of self-defense with weapons and confined yeah. spaces and everything else. 